Hello, uh, long time no see. So, I was teaching a class on phobias, and the main reason for this lesson was that words can be broken down into their parts to discover what they mean. So since all phobias end in phobia, it's simply a matter of my students discovering what the meaning of the first part is uh, in order to discover what the phobia is. And there are difficultish ones, such as coldrophobia, thassophobia, or hippopotamonstros crepedaliophobia, um, which are difficult to determine the meaning of depending on how intimately uh, aware or knowledgeable of Latin you are. Uh, they are clowns, sitting, and large words, respectively, in case you were wondering. But there are easier ones, and these are the ones I focused on with my students, such as arrhythmophobia, hydrophobia, felinophobia, torophobia, or dutchphobia. Um, those are pretty easy, but if they aren't easy enough for you, they are numbers, water, cats, bulls, and the dutch, respectively. Uh, anyways, I like to do riddles at the beginning of some of my lessons to sort of warm up my students, to get them thinking about, or thinking in, e thinking in English. And so I usually make a PowerPoint slide with the riddle on it that relates to the lesson somehow. The riddle that day was what is something that is full of holes but can still hold lots of water? So naturally, because I'm kind of fascinated by fear and phobias, I decided to include something that was very related to a phobia and because the riddle mentioned holes I decided trypophobia would be the way to go and included a picture that would induce trypophobia if one were to have it. Uh, if you aren't aware and there's no real reason why you should be aware of what trypophobia is unless you're weird and obsessed with fear like I am, trypophobia is the fear of holes or more specifically irregular patterns of holes. Uh, so here are some photos that would induce trypophobia in those who have it. Without fail, and in every class, showing this picture, which I assume to be fairly innocuous, students would scream, hide their faces, or just plain be freaked out. Admittedly, I think it's a pretty good start to a lesson on phobias, if I do say so myself. Uh, but I was a little weirded out by this. I assumed that trypophobia was a relatively rare or niche phobia, so I thought it was strange that such a large number of my students were freaked out by this picture. So naturally, I did some research. Um, it turns out that trypophobia is a fairly new phobia in terms of being researched. I could only find one study on it published in 2013. And this research said that approximately 15% of the population suffers from or identifies as triphobic. Tripophobic, not triphobic. Um, with females being slightly more susceptible to tripophobia than males. Uh, this study came out of Essex, England, so it might represent the prevalence of the fear in English or British people rather than the fear in society as a global whole. As an interesting aside, this is not really so much a phobia as it doesn't trigger intense fear as other phobias do, but it tends to trigger a feeling of revulsion or disgust. And the study used evolutionary psychology to explain the phobia, citing that when such formations are found in nature, they tend to be more dangerous. Uh, think beehives or the blue-ringed octopus. And actually, if you think about it, or if you look for her, animals that are horrifically poisonous, a startling number of them have holes or circles or ring patterns. So it kind of makes sense that this fear would travel down genetically and be learned in humans. Anyways, beyond this, it seems that the number of my students who were freaked out by this picture were greatly above the number proposed by the study, the 15%. So naturally I wondered why and I discovered a Korean urban legend that explains this reaction. The story is as follows. What the? Ugh. Okay, so once upon a time, a girl, a young girl, insecure about her looks, is always trying to find new and effective ways to make herself more beautiful. Uh, 
She learns of a new natural beauty fad from a classmate that involves bathing in a mixture of sesame seeds and water for long periods of time. So this treatment is supposed to leave the skin smooth and clear. Uh, so she does it. Uh, and after several hours, her mother begins knocking on the door of the bathroom, uh, demanding that her daughter come out from the bath. Uh, presumably she's using the only bathroom in the house. Um, the girl yells at her mother, just a minute. And so the mom goes away for a bit, comes back, and knocks on the door again and says to the daughter, come out now. And the daughter again asks for just a few minutes, a few more minutes. So the mother, presumably about to pee her pants, uh, knocks down the door and she finds her daughter sitting on the counter or sitting near the sink, uh, covered in blood. And she's, the, the sesame seeds have taken root into her skin and uh, she's trying to pick them out with a needle or a toothpick. Uh, I guess this, this spooky story lighting is not really necessary. It's not really a scary story, uh, but yeah. So this story is perfect for a few reasons. Um, it preys on a strongly held culturally based insecurity uh, in Korea Looks are considered everything. People who are beautiful are believed to be bound for success, while those who are ugly are believed to be doomed to failure. And not only that, but coworkers, uh, friends, classmates are more than willing to point out any physical imperfections that you have. Um, and as such, many Koreans are very, very insecure about their looks and they will do anything to, I guess, become more beautiful or hide their imperfections. So, like, makeup shops are everywhere here, and girls, and many men as well, are constantly wearing makeup. So much so that at both of my schools, uh, makeup is prohibited for students, uh, and those who are caught wearing makeup are punished with the same severity as students who are caught fighting or smoking. My students all carry around mirrors, sometimes little handheld ones, but sometimes big ones about this size, and they're constantly fixing their hair. People always stop at mirrors in the hallways and fix their, their, their faces, their clothes. People are always aware of how they are, how they look physically. Not only that, but plastic surgery is huge here. As I've previously mentioned, Korea has the highest rate of plastic surgery in the world. So the takeaway from this is that people are really insecure and do all sorts of crazy things and not crazy things to become more beautiful. And I think that a good scary story preys on commonly held fears. And this story preys on the prolific Korean fear of ugliness. It's a marker of a really good urban legend, so this type of story is really poised to work its way into the Korean zeitgeist. Um, I believe that many fears have an infectious quality. When we learn that people are afraid of things, we instinctively become more aware of that thing, or even adopt the fear ourselves sometimes. And this makes sense from an evolutionary psychology perspective. Um, our ancestors survived by learning what was dangerous, what was fatal to other people, and learning from that, learning to avoid these things that kill other people. So naturally, if people are afraid of something, that must mean that thing is dangerous and that we should probably avoid that thing too. So everyone who is alive today is the genetic recipient of such sensitivity to fears or the fears of other people. And we tend to adopt these fears as our own because it helps us to survive and trypophobia, it's, it's a really weird phobia. I think it sticks in our brain because it's so odd. It's a fear that people don't really know they have until people tell them. So if you take, for example, this BuzzFeed article type, titled, Trypophobia is a real terrifying thing and you definitely have it. I think that this evidence is how the fear spreads. People link to this clickbait article from this cancer sore of a website and they're intrigued by such a weird phobia, and they sort of adopt it for themselves. So 
So it's something you don't realize you're afraid of until people tell you that you're afraid of it. Uh, I think it's the same way that people who are prone to suggestion are more likely to pick up false memories or the way in which the movie called, I think it's called I Am Sybil, which dealt with the topic of multiple personalities caused rise to a rash of cases of people identifying as having multiple personalities or dissociative identity disorder um, after the movie was released. Some ideas are just infectious, and I think some people are just typically more prone to be infected by these ideas or, I guess, becoming inceptioned to them. Um, and fear is obviously something that is evolutionarily poised to be quickly absorbed. So, to me, as I said, trypophobia is really strange. It's not really a typical phobia. It's something sort of mysterious, and it isn't immediately obvious what makes it terrifying or why these patterns of holes should be so revulsive. So our brains hardwired to learn fear from others is at once curious and susceptible to it because it's so weird. And I wonder if the growing of the subreddit dedicated to trypophobia and articles like this BuzzFeed one will cause a rise in the number of people who identify as trypophobic. And now some uh, professionals, some psychologists, some researchers say that the patterns that induce trypophobia are mathematically weird and they cause our brains to work on overdrive to figure them out. And that is where the fear comes from. And this might be a true, true, this might be a more valid reason than the one I'm presenting. I'm not sure. This is just what I think. But I think it's really interesting how Korea was kind of ahead of the curve on this one by such a, such a margin with its tripophobic uh, urban legend. Uh, so yeah, those are my thoughts on this strange niche matter. Uh, thank you very much for watching.